Okay, so the next thing we need to talk about are chemical reactions because we're eventually going to want to do some calculations involving them. Uh, chemical reactions are um, when uh, reactants are involved in a chemical change and produce products. And so that's how we write uh, an equation, a chemical equation that represents a chemical reaction. Okay? Uh, for instance, um, gasoline is primarily octane, which is C8H18 plus oxygen. Uh, octane is a liquid, and so we write in parentheses L to show that it is a liquid phase. Oxygen, of course, in the atmosphere is a gas, and so in parentheses we write a G to denote that it's in the gas phase. And when these combine uh, in complete combustion, uh, they form products. Carbon dioxide, also in the gas phase, plus water, which because of the uh, exothermic nature of this reaction, it releases a lot of heat. It's also in the gas phase. Um, so this is how we write chemical equations for chemical reactions. We have reactants on the left side. We show an arrow to indicate that there's a change. And then we show the products. If there's more than one reactant or more than one product, we separate those with the plus sign. So one reactant plus this equals, you can think, uh, the products. Additionally, there can be other phases. We can have uh, reactants or products in the solid phase. And so we would write S in parentheses. And then additionally, very important in terms of biological chemistry and lots of other chemistry, is we can also have things in the aqueous phase. So AQ uh, in parentheses stands for aqueous, which means dissolved in water. Okay. Um, one thing that we're definitely going to need to do is balance these chemical equations. As you can see right here, octane contains eight carbon atoms. Over here on the product side, we have a molecule of carbon, which only has one carbon atom. Where did the rest of those seven carbon atoms go? Well, it turns out that we would need to balance that. We'd need to add coefficients to indicate that more than one carbon dioxide molecule is produced in this chemical reaction. So let's learn how to balance chemical equations. All right, uh, this primarily stems from the law of conservation of mass, uh, which means that elements cannot be created or destroyed from the fact that matter cannot be created or destroyed. Atoms cannot be created or destroyed in chemical reactions. And I often abbreviate chemical reactions, reactions as RxN and RxNs, okay? So what this means is that the number of atoms on the left side for each element must equal the number of atoms on the right side. Okay, so again, in our last example, we had eight, element, eight carbon atoms on the left, we only had one, so we're going to have to rectify that, and we balance using coefficients. We never change the subscript. Okay, so um, let's take a look at a couple examples and uh, show you what we mean by that. All right, so here's our first example. We've got iron 
in the solid phase, reacting with chlorine in the gas phase to produce, um, well, we can name this. This would be iron 3. Since chloride has a negative 1 charge, that must mean that iron has 3 plus because there's 3 chlorine. So iron 3 chloride. Okay. But in terms of balancing this, we can see that, okay, there's two chlorines and three chlorines. That doesn't equal. So generally how I balance equations is I set up a table. We've got reactants on one side, products on the other, and I list all my reactants. And then, of course, um, they're going to be on the product side. So I've got iron, and then I've got chlorine. Okay, so I've got how many react, how many iron atoms do I have on the reactant side? One. How many chlorine atoms? I've got two. How many iron atoms do I have on the right? One. And how many chlorine? Three. Okay, you can see that this doesn't equal. All right. So what do I need to do? Iron atoms equal right now, but here I've got a two chlorines and three chlorines, so that doesn't equal, that's what I need to fix, okay? What I mean by uh, can't change the subscripts, I can't change this to Cl3 or this to Cl2 because that's not what they are. Chlorine is always a diatomic molecule, meaning it's always Cl2. I can't just change that to Cl3, that's not what chlorine is. This is iron three chloride, and so I can't change this to FeCl2 because that's not iron three chloride, that would be iron two chloride. So I can't change the subscripts. What I can do is multiply by coefficients, which tells me there's more than one molecule or more than one uh, formula unit of an ionic compound. So here's a two, here's a three. I can't multiply one of those values by a number to equal each other, so I have to find the uh, common denominator. And so what I would need to do here is multiply this by three and this by two to get to six. And then that would equal each other. And so what these values go as is they go as coefficients. So I need to multiply this by 3. So I write a 3 in front of chlorine, and that's my coefficient. To indicate that I have three chlorine molecules, each chlorine molecule having two chlorine atoms. And then I need to write a 2, it's coefficient in front of iron 3 chloride, to indicate that I have uh, six chlorines. Chlorines are now balanced, but I changed the number of iron atoms on the right side by incorporating that coefficient. So I need to multiply, change this to 2. And now I can go back here and just multiply this iron by 2. So that equals uh, 2 iron atoms as well. And so now you can see that I have 2 iron atoms, 2 iron atoms. And 3 times 2, 6 chlorines. And 2 times 3, 6 chlorines. And so now this is a balanced chemical equation. Okay, let's try another couple of examples. Here is an example where I have polyatomic ions. So I've got sodium hydroxide reacting with iron 2 nitrate that produces, these are both in the aqueous phase, so that means they're dissolved in water. This produces iron 2 hydroxide in the solid phase and then sodium nitrate in the aqueous phase. Okay, and so uh, I mentioned that these have polyatomic ions because that's sometimes a trick to make this a little bit easier. Okay, so when I'm balancing this chemical equation, as long as the polyatomic ions don't change, don't react, I can balance them as one unit. So instead of thinking of this as one nitrogen and three oxygens or two nitrogens and six oxygen, I think of this as two nitrate polyatomic ions. And so when I'm setting up my table to balance this, I'm going to write down, okay, I have sodium. I have, instead of oxygen and hydrogen, I have a hydroxide polyatomic ion to balance. Iron. And nitrate. Okay, so now I can count up these species on the left and right. On, on the reactant side, I have one sodium, one hydroxide, one iron. 
and two nitrates. On the product side, I have one iron, two hydroxides, one sodium. All right, so one, so I wrote that wrong, but that's one sodium, one iron's down here, and then one nitrate. All right, and so we can see we've got some balancing to do on the hydroxide. On the uh, reactant side, I need to multiply that by two so that I get a coefficient uh, two in front of sodium hydroxide, so that balances my hydroxides. Uh, the nitrates were initially unbalanced as well. Over here, I have only one nitrate, and so I need to rectify that by using the coefficient two. Now in each scenario, when I put a coefficient in front of those compounds, I change the number of nitrates, but by Balancing the nitrates and the hydroxides, I actually kept sodium balanced. Iron is still balanced, and so I'll just go through and double check this. I've got two sodiums, two hydroxides, one iron, two nitrates, and on the right side I've got one iron still, two hydroxides, good, two nitrates, excuse me, two sodiums, two sodiums, and then two nitrates, two nitrates. All right, so this is balanced. And so again, uh, a good, uh, a, a, I guess, a trick or a hint to use for polyatomic ions when they're still the same on the left and right is to balance them as one individual species, and that will uh, make this a little bit easier. Okay, one last example. We've got a combustion reaction, just like propane. All right, so I've got, um, or excuse me, just like octane we talked about, we've got carbon, or excuse me, propane, plus oxygen, combusting to form carbon dioxide and water. All right, so I don't have any polyatomic ions in this scenario, so I'm just gonna go this, through this straightforward with the number of atoms. I've got carbon, and I've got three of them. Hydrogen, got eight. Oxygen, two. And that's it for the reactants. Now over on the product side, I've got one carbon. Now here, you'll notice that I have oxygen in two different molecules. And that's okay, but I do need to account for both, both, all of them. So I've got three oxygens on the product side, and then two hydrogens. All right, so this uh, for this equation, one hint that I uh, usually... Uh, tell students is that I'm going to leave elements that are all by themselves until the end and that way I can change this coefficient and not change any other elements and so that usually keeps things a little bit simple all right so I'm going to go after carbon and hydrogen first leave oxygen till the end which one should I uh, balance first well on th this case it doesn't matter carbon or hydrogen but uh, I do see that on the reactant side, I have three carbon atoms and one carbon on the product side. So I need to multiply this by three to balance the carbon atoms. On the uh, reactant side, I have eight hydrogens. On the product side, I have two, so I need to multiply this by four to balance the hydrogens. And now by doing so, I changed the number of oxygen atoms on the product side. So I need to fix this in my table. Three times two is six, plus four is 10. I've got 10 oxygen atoms on the product side now. And so last, but certainly not least, I need to balance the oxygen. And so I can just multiply this by five, a coefficient of five here. And that will give me 10 oxygens on both sides. So I'll just double check this. I've got three carbons, three carbons, eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens, and then five times two, 10, three times two, six, plus four is 10 oxygens on both sides. And so that's one other hint I can uh, give you is that when you can, leave elements by themselves uh, until the end, and that way you can change your coefficients and not mess with any other reactants or products.